Bonjour. Merci, Fran et Bruce, pour vos paroles, votre gentillesse, mais surtout pour votre leadership depuis des années maintenant pour la société de Yad Vashem et cet événement incontournable pour tant d'entre nous ici sur la colline. Je tiens aussi à remercier la, Canada, la Canadian Society for Yad Vashem de nous tenir tous réunis aujourd'hui. Yad Vashem works tirelessly here in Canada and around the world to educate people about the Holocaust. And in keeping with this year's theme, as I have been reminded on a deeply personal level this past year, the facts and the universal lessons and stories of the Holocaust must be known by everyone. One of the most powerful ways that we can come to understand these truths and learn these lessons is by listening to the stories of survivors. Survivors like Nate Leipziger, who I'm sure many of you know. Nate was at my side when I visited Auschwitz-Birkenau last summer. It was there that he told me his own survivor's story, and I'll never forget it. Être là, à cet endroit. Être là avec un survivant qui a maintenant presque 90 ans, qui a vu pour la première fois à travers les yeux d'un enfant, les wagons, les fils barbelés et les cheminées fumantes. Il était à peine plus vieux que l'est mon fils aîné présentement. Nate m'a raconté l'histoire de sa famille. Mais ce qui m'a le plus impressionné aujourd'hui, chaque fois que j'y ai, ai pensé depuis, c'est à quel point Nate tient à raconter cette histoire à chaque personne qui est prête à l'écouter, surtout les jeunes. Plus de 70 ans après la fin de l'Holocauste, il est facile de s'en sentir éloigné dans le temps et dans l'espace. But it also is an opportunity to remember that while the Holocaust took place on distant shores, as Canadians, we must always ever acknowledge our own errors and misdeeds. A most egregious example of this misguided policy, where between 1933 and 1945, the Canadian government accepted only about 5,000 Jewish refugees, was in 1939, when Canada turned away the MS St. Louis. There were more than 900 refugees on board, European Jews seeking sanctuary here in Canada. And our government turned them away, forced to return to Europe. 254 were eventually killed in the Holocaust. We cannot and we must not turn away from this uncomfortable truth and Canada's part in it. We must learn from this story and let its lessons guide our actions today and in the days to come. Because as stories like these remind us, the cruelty, the indifference and the hatred that made the Holocaust possible is still possible today, even here in Canada. Alors, nous devons être vigilants et nous devons être fermes. Discrimination, racisme, antisémitisme ne sont pas des valeurs canadiennes et ne seront pas tolérées. La moindre menace, le moindre acte de vandalisme contre un centre communautaire juif, contre une synagogue, est déjà trop. Et c'est vrai aussi pour les églises chrétiennes, pour les mosquées, pour les gourdoiras et les mandirs. When Nate and his father came to Canada, as have 
generations of Jewish Canadians since 1760. They came seeking a better life, a safer, more peaceful life, in a place that doesn't just respect religious differences, but embraces them, that protects them, as we do in our Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which turned 35 years old this year. To the honored survivors who are here with us today, I wish to say a few things. I want to thank you, on behalf of all Canadians, for choosing to make Canada your home. You have helped to build a country that is overwhelmingly peaceful and prosperous, a place we can all be proud of. I want to thank you for all the ways you have given back to your communities, for the leadership you have shown when other religious groups have faced persecution or hate. And above all, I want to thank you for sharing your stories. Your stories must be told and heard. Your experiences which stand as a testimony not only to unspeakable horror, but also to tremendous courage and resilience, must be known. They must be known because your personal accounts are precious and irreplaceable. They are the keys that can unlock in every heart the true resolve needed to change our world for the better to make a world where we can all say with conviction and with confidence, never again. Merci.